We're going to teach an AI how to drive by recreating a Mario Kart-like game. This version is just focused on driving, but let me know if you want to see a version with items and everything. I will quickly show you how I did it and then after how you can follow along step by step. It started out simple, like every 3D project. Some cubes, some planes. I tried my hands at a few different ways of creating a Mario Kart style driving experience, but none came close. Nintendo is just too good at making games. After doing a bit of research, I came across this video. It's great. Mix and Jam recreated the Mario Kart drifting and thankfully he published the source code online. So yeah, I stole it. With a bit of tweaking, I quickly got it working in my simple scene. Cool. Okay, but right now I have to drive the kart, but that's not what we want. So I created the simplest setup possible for training our first AI. Just a straight line. Easy. I thought about how to assign rewards for the AI to learn best and settled on a checkpoint system, because that seems most flexible. So I can set a number of checkpoints, place them around the track, like I want, and the goal is always to reach the next checkpoint. No rewards are given for reaching a previous checkpoint or skipping one. I used Raycast sensors for observations. They work great in my experience for driving games, so the AI doesn't see what we see. It shoots out laser beams until it hits something and registers what the thing hit is. So in this case it can differentiate between a wall and a checkpoint. The cool thing is, we can specify the layers the raycast should ignore. And if we set the card to the ignore raycast layer, we can place multiple cards on the same track. The cards think they're alone, but in reality they have friends all around them. It's just that they will never be able to see them. That's really sad. And also great for us, because it lets us train multiple cards at once. Hooray for social isolation. The most work was modifying the driving logic to be AI trainable. I had to move some maths around, rework some stuff, doing refactoring. It wasn't too challenging, but it had to be done. So the card is not just controllable by the keyboard input, but also for the AI. In the step-by-step -step guide later, this is already done, so we can focus on the machine learning part. Training on the straight line went really well. They figured it out quickly. F funny thing is that they came up with the strategy to drive backwards because yeah, why not? Okay, that was easy, but, and this is the cool thing about not having hard-coded AI, we can just change the racing tracks at some corners and see if it's still able to learn. I present to you the jankiest track in existence. It's quickly jumbled together with some planes and cubes, but it does its job. And again, the AI figured it out fast, yes. At this point I was quite happy. Happy with the AI and not the track, that's still an abomination. So I went to the best site for free 3D models, which is Kenny. And I downloaded their racing package. I really love their 3D stuff. Using their models I put together a track which finally looks like something. I had to stretch out the road pieces on the y-axis to create walls because yeah, without walls this AI wouldn't work. I think for future versions it would be interesting to test invisible walls they can drive through but still detect using their raycast sensors. But this is more than enough for now. After placing enough checkpoints, the only thing left to do is start training. This time it took a bit longer, which isn't a big surprise, but still quite fast and I think they managed to do a fine job. Just for kicks, I went ahead and implemented a camera system that automatically switches to different cameras, depending on a checkpoint. I think it's quite a cool viewing experience, check it out. Okay, now I will show you how you can do the same. Follow along closely. First you have to clone the following repository, you can find the link in the description. You can download it directly from GitHub by clicking on the code drop down and then download zip, or you can use a git client. 
I recommend Git Kraken. However you manage to download the repository, open it with Unity. If you haven't downloaded Unity yet, there's also a link in the description. I used this version for the project. Any later version should also work. Let's start by opening the sample scene under Assets slash Scenes. You should see the racing track and the cards. Pressing play, we can see that nothing is happening. That's how it should be. If you had any problems up to this point, I recommend reaching out in my Discord server. There you will get an answer quickly. Again, link is in the description. I highly encourage everybody to join. Okay, let's get to the juicy stuff. In the hierarchy to the left on the cards, you can find a lot of card agents. They are marked as blue because they are prefabs. If we edit one of them, all change. It's a really nice feature, but it's important that we switch to prefab mode, because if we were to change them here, it wouldn't be applied to all. You can go into prefab mode just by clicking this little arrow or by double clicking the card agent in the project view. Under card agent, you can find the card game object. There are already some scripts attached we will need, but the main logic is missing. If you have experience with ML agents, you know that you will always need an agent script and a behavior parameter script that defines how the model is set up. If you were to create your own agent, you would need to create them first, but here they already exist. We can ignore the specifics of the card controller script. It's used for the driving logic and that's not our concern right now. Let's start with the most obvious part. The card isn't moving. First, we have to change the behavior parameters. Under vector actions, we set the space type to continuous and the space size to 2. It's set to 2 because we have two input variables, the gas pedal and the steering wheel. Regarding the space type, we can choose between continuous and discrete. If we were to use discrete, we could only steer fully to the left or fully to the right without any fine grained steps in between. So continuous makes more sense, I would say. Okay, great. With that, we have defined the output shape of our model, but the inputs aren't used anywhere. For that, we have to jump into our card agent script. Right now, for the task at hand, there are two methods that interest us, on actions received and heuristic. The heuristic method is what we use for testing. There we check for keyboard or controller input and apply it to the action buffer. When training or running a model, the heuristic method will just be ignored. I still highly recommend to always try it with manual human input first. So then let's start with the heuristic method. For those who have used an older version of ML agents, you will notice the keyword action buffers. This is something changed recently. In reality, action buffers are just containers that hold some array of numbers. The syntax is neat, but in the end, they're really just wrappers around arrays. You will get used to them very quickly. With this new syntax, we first have to choose if we want to use discrete or continuous actions. As we selected continuous beforehand, we go with that. We do that by creating a new variable, I will just call it action, and assigning actions.continuous actions to it. When we do that, a new instance of an array with floating point numbers will be created for us. Of course, it's not an array, it's a wrapper around an array, but we can access it like you would expect from a normal array. So don't worry about it. Our first element of the array can either be the steering or the acceleration. Let's start with the steering. We can use input.getAccessHorizontal for steering input. That's quite a handy method which returns a number between minus 1 and 1 and works with keyboard and controller input. So when using the controller, it refers to the x-axis of the analog stick, and when using a keyboard, it refers to the left and right arrow key or the A and D keys, both work. We assign that value to the first element in our continuous action array. The next element is acceleration. In this case, we want the acceleration when pressing a button or key. So we can just use an if branch. If input.getKey, in my case key code W or whatever key you prefer, is true, we set the second element to 1, else we set it to 0. It's that easy. It's so easy, in fact, that we can use the shorthand way of writing a conditional, which is the following. It's the same logic. First, our condition, input.getKey, then a question mark. Following that is the case our condition is true, 
colon, the case our condition is false. That's it for the heuristic function. We check for input and fill the action buffer accordingly. But the action buffer isn't used anywhere. That's where on action received comes in. The action buffer now is used to execute some action and make stuff happen. So let's jump into our on actions received method. First, again, we have to decide if we are using continuous or discrete actions. Same logic as before applies. Now, we again have an array, I called it input, with two elements inside, our steering input and our acceleration input. We just have to apply those to our card controller. Because remember, this is where the driving logic is located. We first call underline card controller dot apply acceleration and pass in the second element of our array. That's our gas pedal being handled. Next, we call underline card controller dot steer and pass in the first element. The rest is handled for us in the card controller. That's it. Let's press play in Unity and nothing happens. That's because right now our agent isn't called to do anything. We can fix that easily by adding a decision requester component to the same game object. We can leave the settings as is and yes, you should be able to control your card right now. Are we ready to train our AI? Not quite, but it won't take long. We have to add some sensors to our agent so it isn't blind. Let's do that by adding a Raycast Perception Sensor 3D. Let's give it a name to differentiate it from the second sensor we will add afterwards. Next we will define the detectable tags. In Unity we can tag game objects in the scene. I already have tagged the walls and all the checkpoints with the checkpoint tags. Let's add both so it can distinguish what a wall is and what a checkpoint is. Next, let's set the ray layer mask. Here we decide what layers the rays hit and which it can pass through. In this case, the default settings are fine. Just make sure the ignore raycast layer isn't selected to ensure it isn't detecting the other cards. Now we can define how many rays we shoot, the angle between them, the length, and also the spear cast radius. You can just play around with these settings to figure them out. Just a small tip, you can think of the spear cast radius like the thickness of the ray cast. I have chosen these settings for the first sensor. Let's add another sensor to our car. The reason for that is that I want a second, more precise sensor that looks ahead. Again, it's the same component, just different settings. Those are mine. That's it for the sensors. I added an extra vector observation to the cards in my version, which I think could be quite important. Let's jump into the collect observations method in our card agent script for that. I wanted to give the agent the information which checkpoint is next, so it knows which checkpoint to target. The way I went about doing that is just by passing the vector between the card itself and the next checkpoint as an observation. It's pretty easy to do. Let's create a new vector3 variable, call it diff, and subtract the position of our card from the position of the next checkpoint. Just by calling underline checkpoint manager dot next checkpoint to reach dot transform dot position minus transform dot position. We can easily add that to the observations by calling sensor dot add observation and pass in the diff. I also recommend normalizing it to some degree so the network can better handle it. It's best when the values are between minus one and one, so I just divided it by 20, as I expect that no checkpoint will be further than 20 units from our card. Right now the neural networks expects no extra information, so we also have to set the space size of our observations to three in our behavior parameter script, because it's a three-dimensional vector. And that's it for observations. The rewards and checkpoint system is already in place. I recommend adding a small penalty each step to encourage faster driving. Let's quickly go back to our collect observations method for that. And just call add reward and pass in minus 0 0.001. Now that's really it. We can start training our agents. For that you need to have Python with ML agents installed. I have a link in the description that helps you with that. Now you just have to put into your command line mlagents-learn and the path to the trainer config. In this case I have mine put into the repository. So just drag the card agent.yaml into the terminal, specify some run id with minus minus run minus id equals whatever, press enter. Now hopefully the Unity logo should appear soon. Again, if you have any problems with this step, many people do. 
ask in the Discord server. After the Unity logo has appeared, we can just press play in the editor and let our agents train. That's it, you have done it. Right now an AI is training in front of your eyes. Of course, feel free to modify the track, changing the locations of the checkpoints to whatever you want. You can always exit the training process with Ctrl or Command C and the model will be saved. The location of which depends on the active part of your terminal. There we will find a folder called results in which you will find a .nn file. This is the model. You can drag it into Unity and put it into your agents. If you got stuck anywhere and just want the final results, you can also download the finished branch of the repository. Go to GitHub and select finished instead of main and then download the project. Same as before. I hope this was helpful to you. I have set myself the goal of reaching 10k subscribers till the end of 2020. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. And if you really enjoy my content, you can also support me on Patreon. A big thanks to Miguel for supporting me on Patreon. And to everybody else, have a great day, thank you and peace!